Hi, this is Barrett Hoffman with West Coast Electric Cycles. I am going to show you how to program your Cycle Analyst version 2.4. This is uh, the, the more basic model of the Cycle Analyst series. Um, and we sell it with our uh, 12 and 6 FET MOSFET controllers. And I'm going to go through the menu and show you everything that you can set up. Uh, so right now you can see our voltage is right at about 50.0 volts. Um, this is for, uh, this would be for like a, a 48 volt battery, uh, which has a charge, a fully charged uh, voltage of about 54.6. And uh, right now it's at uh, 50 volts. So, so to get into the programming mode, we're going to hold and uh, press and hold the left button. So we'll press and hold. Okay, so now we're in the basic setup. The first thing we have is the speed and the tire size. So let's go ahead and program that. So to enter that menu, we'll, we'll hold and press and hold the right button. And we're going to set the units first. So if you want kilometers, you can leave it there. If you want miles per hour, you can... We'll go into that mode, press and hold the right button again and then just press the but the right button once we'll change to miles press and hold to go back to the main menu so if we go back press the left button to go back we can see the set units is at miles now go to the next menu item we'll press the right button and we set the wheel and this is the wheel circumference alright so we're gonna do a little bit of math here we're gonna calculate the circumference of our bicycle tire and uh, I just went and measured a bicycle tire and the measurement was about 26 and a half inches so I'm going to convert inches into millimeters and then find the circumference based on that so I'm going to take my dimension in inches 26.5 and I'm going to multiply by 25.4 that'll convert to millimeters so the diameter of my wheel is 673.1 millimeters now to find the circumference I multiply that by 3.1415 to get 2114.5 millimeters so I'm going to set it to uh, 2115 uh, in the cycle analyst so 2115 so let's go ahead and set that so we're gonna press and hold the right button again okay so now we're into the uh, setting here so I want to leave the two so I'm just gonna press and hold the right button to, to keep that as it is and then I'm gonna change this to a one so pressing the right button raises it one you can raise it up with the right or raise it down with the left so we want 21 press and hold to set it and then I'm going to lower that to a 1 again press and hold to set and 5 that's what I want 2115 so I'm going to press and hold to set one more time I'm going to scroll back to verify set wheel is at 2115 millimeters okay so that should be representative of my wheel diameter of 26.5 inches is the wheel circumference that will uh, ensure that our miles per hour reading is correct when we're on our bicycle uh, the number of poles so this is going to be dependent on the motor that you have and uh, or also the the version of the cycle anal analyst that you have if you have the cycle analyst with the speed sensor that's separate then you would leave this set to one basically what that means is for every revolution of the wheel the magnet sensor essentially sends a signal one time per revolution with a direct drive hub motor that number is going to vary a little bit um, and for most direct drive hub motors the the, the Muxus and the 9C um, and the 9C clone motors, most of the time this number is going to be 46 poles. That's the number of magnets in, a, in the motor rotor. So uh, for a direct drive hub motor, we're going to change this to 46. If you have a geared hub motor, 
Um, there's it, it's a little bit more complicated. You have to know the number of magnets and then multiply that by the gear ratio. Uh, and sometimes that'll be like a hundred, um, but you'll have to check with your manufacturer. But for direct drive hub motors, the most common is 46, so we're going to set this to 46. So we're going to press and hold the right to enter to change, and then we're going to okay set our number four and set the six, press and hold, and we're set. Okay, so set number of poles is 46. That's that's total magnets. That's 23 pole pairs, or 46 poles total. All right, speed limit. Uh, you can leave that set to 99 if you don't want the cycle analyst to do any limiting. Um, or you can set it to, uh, let's say you want to be legal and you want to maximize, um, you don't want to exceed 20 miles per hour. We can go ahead and change that. So we'll press and hold. And we'll set that to 20 so that we're fully legal for Europe. Okay, 20 miles per hour speed limit. Amps limit. Uh, again, this will be dependent on the controller and your whatever you want to set it to. Um, this is just setting the current limit of the of the whole system. If your controller uh, is capable, uh, some of our controllers go up to 100 amps, um, then you can leave this high. If you want to restrict the amps, you can reduce it. Uh, let's set ours to 40 amps. So go ahead and enter in here. So there's four and zero, 40 amps. Okay, main display watts. This is where we can change what's shown on the main display. Uh, let's just go look at the options that uh, are, are available. So we'll press and hold to, uh, to see what we have. So we can have watts, we can have amps, uh, and that's it. So I'm gonna stick with watts. So I'm just gonna press and hold. And battery setup. So if you recall from uh, earlier in this video, we have a 13 cell 48 volt battery. So we're going to change this to a 48 volt uh, lithium battery. So we'll go ahead and enter the mode. And the chemistry is not LiPo, so we're going to change that. And uh, there's lithium um, iron, uh, sealed lead acid, nickel metal hydride, Lithium manganese is going to be the closest for 18650 lithium cells. So we're going to go with that. Uh, the other, of course, the other options were lithium polymer, which is like Hobby King RC LiPo battery. Um, I don't know what this one is. And then lithium uh, iron. So we're going to go lithium manganese or lithium LIMN. So that's our 18650 cell chemistry. So we'll set that. And then we're going to set our capacity. Uh, my uh, battery here happens to be uh, 12 amp hours. So I'm going to change the amp hours here. We'll keep the one. Raise that to two. And leave that at zero. So 12 amp hour capacity. And then we have to set the number of cells. So we want to change this to 13. It's 13 lithium cells. So we'll go ahead and change this. Thirteen cells. Okay, number of cells 13. Low volt limit. This is where we want the, the cutoff. Uh, the cycle analyst will cut power once we reach this voltage. So on a 13 cell uh, lithium manganese or 18650 cell battery, I want that cutoff voltage to be about, uh, we'll call it, well, let's say 42 volts, which is um, just over 3 volts per cell. So we'll set this to 42. So 4, press hold to set, 42 volts. Okay. Now, the advanced setup. This is where we're going to set the shunt for our controller. So I have over here my controller, which has a stated R shunt value of 1.26 milliohms. Okay. So I'm going to set, go into the advanced setup. 
and we'll get to that in a second here. So set range, we're going to leave this low. Um, there's a high uh, setting range that's mainly for really high powered systems. We're going to go with the low setting. Um, so we'll so we'll keep the low, and then we're going to sh set the R shunt. Uh, so if you remember, our R shunt on our controller was 1.26 milliohms, so we'll go ahead and set that. So we'll enter the program, 1.260, okay, 0 amps. Right now we don't have any load, so I'm going to press and hold, okay, so we have essentially zero amps. Voltage calibrate. Um, I really don't usually change this. And averaging 0.3 seconds. This is just taking, um, instead of taking instantaneous measurements and your uh, cycle analyst kind of jumping around all over the place, it takes a uh, 0.3 second average uh, for whatever your power, voltage, and current setting, uh, or current uh, usages. Um, so I usually leave this where it is. Uh, serial output, this is just if you're recording some information um, at one hertz, I usually don't change this. Uh, PS gain, I usually don't change, um, nor do I change the uh, uh, the other gains. And that's usually all I'll change. The max throttle, um, you can change this to to uh, uh, be closer to what your throttle is, but you can even just leave it here. I usually don't mess with this one either. And if you want to reset your odometer, you can set it here. Otherwise, you can just leave it at zero, um, assuming you're setting it up for the first time. And same thing with your battery, total amp hours. Um, if you know how many amp hours are on your battery and you want to set it to that, you can. Uh, if it's a new battery, just leave it set to zero, and it'll basically, it's like an odometer for the battery, so total amp hours used. And uh, same thing with uh, cycles, battery cycles or charge cycles. And I usually don't change the rest of these. The voltage shutdown just tells you at what voltage the cycle analyst shuts down. Most of the time you're not going to be running less than 11 volts, so... I usually leave that where it is as well. And there's your setup. So you can see here, uh, we still have our battery voltage at 50 volts. Um, we have our, basically everything is zeroed out. Here is uh, the second page of the main display. Um, so we have voltage, watts, amps, and amp hours. Um, so all this is, has been reset to zero. Um, and effectively no power running through it at the moment. Watt hours, um, you can see just a very tiny amount of watt hours. That's basically what um, what the display has consumed since we've had it turned on. Watt hours per mile just uh, does a quick calculation to tell you if you're riding your bike how many watt hours you're using per mile, um, which helps you kind of determine your range if you know how many watt hours your battery is. Um, percent region, if you hold down the right button, you'll reset all the statistics here. So we haven't done any regen. And then amps max, uh, or amps minimum, amps maximum, and voltage minimum. Um, so the voltage minimum will tell you your lowest voltage sag, so you can kind of see how much your battery is, uh, the voltage of your battery is sagging under load. Um, when you power up from a start, you'll be able to see what your maximum current is, and then the minimum current is essentially going to be your regenerative braking, how hard you're, you're braking if you have regenerative braking on a direct rev hub motor setup. Uh, max speed, average speed, and then total uh, hours of riding, hours, minutes, and seconds. Battery cycles, total amp hours, and total miles. This is your essentially your odometer settings. And back to the start screen. 
So that is a tour of the cycle analyst and how I typically set it up. Uh, hope you enjoyed that and hope this uh, was useful for you. Thanks for watching. Love it if you would subscribe to my channel. Uh, I'll have lots more videos coming in the future. And so uh, if you want to stay up to date with uh, everything I'm doing, uh, please uh, click the subscribe and uh, enjoy.